Dear participants, let's start our webinar. We will uh, try to uh, fill our information in 40 minutes, and I'd now like to introduce our team. This is uh, Ira, Felix, Roman, and me. My name is Ksenia, and Roman and I uh, will be presenting today. We'll talk about our grant program and we'll present it. And uh, also today we have an interpreter, Anna Akmaeva. So our webinar is held in Russian, but if it's more convenient for you to listen in English, then at the bottom of your screen, you can see a globe button. You can press it and choose English. And also please mute the original audio. We also have a chat function and q and a function so if you have any questions you can write those in english or in russian in the chat or in the q and a our team will be monitoring your questions and uh, at the end of the webinar we will ask your questions so uh, let's go to the next slide Once again, I'd like to underline that today we are organizing our webinar both in Russian and in English. Well, probably you're already aware uh, of our PASTE Foundation. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about how you can stay updated with our news and events. Felix, could you please go to the next slide? So we have the uh, newsletter based newsletter, you can subscribe to this on our official website, based.org.uk. Then we also have a closed chat on Telegram. If you'd like to join it as a professional in the field of uh, palliative care, you can also submit your application to join the chat. And now in our chat in Zoom, you'll see links appearing. So you can save the links and you can fill in the application forms. Uh, next slide, please. Here on this slide, you can see the QR code and you can also see our email address and you can write your questions in connection to the grant program or in connection to any events or activities of our foundation based and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Now, I'd like to give the floor to my colleague, Roman, and uh, he will start our webinar and talk about the grant program. Roman, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Ksenia. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. We are very happy to see everybody here. That means that the grant program is interesting for you, and we are very thankful for this. Now, I'd like to just talk a bit about the grant program in general, why we came up with this uh, who is it intended for? And then I'll give the floor back to Ksenia and she'll talk about some technical details, how to send uh, applications, so what are the specifics, etc. So now I'll share my screen and just uh, let's talk a little bit about what BASED does and how this uh, grant program is connected to our activities. Well, I think that if you are here today, that means that you already know something about us, but still, I'd like to repeat that uh, BASED stands for the Foundation for Palliative Care Education. We are a charity organization. We are registered and based in the UK. And starting from 2017, we've been working to promote uh, the increase in the quality of palliative care in the region and we focus on education of professionals and we also support leaders and drivers of changes who promote further the system of palliative care in their regions mostly we do this via educational initiatives but we also have a lot of other activities very interesting ones such as webinars as well as our newsletters and getting back to the education we also have educational courses and programs uh, we've been launching them over this whole course of time and we continue to do so and this program the program of uh, professional mobility this is the next step of development for us because we believe that for palliative 
healthcare professionals, it's very important to have contacts with colleagues, to visit events, to study the best international practices, to exchange their opinions. And so here you can see the key features of our grant program. Well, first and foremost, of course, it's financial support that enables you to do so. Secondly, it's the opportunity for global networking to exchange opinions at conferences and seminars. And of course, it's uh, continuous uh, learning during uh, our professional life and our life as it is, because it's very important to continue learning over the course of our life and uh, our grants are applicable not only to conferences and um, general public events, but you can also just build your educational program. For example, you'd like to visit some organization where you'd like to do uh, an internship or get a training because you believe that colleagues there have relevant experience for you. This is also possible via the grant program. And of course, uh, it's knowledge exchange as well. We are deeply convinced that in our professional community, the uh, team work and team knowledge and team expertise is very important and uh, that's why it's uh, so uh, important to make use of the knowledge that are already there and um, to promote them now i would like to talk about who can apply for these grants professional ability grants are for the professionals in the field of palliative care and uh, this is our first grant program of professional mobility and that's why we've created a quite a wide framework and when we say uh, palliative care professionals we mean everybody who does this professionally nurses doctors managers maybe even researchers from those countries that uh, i'll mention now kazakhstan uzbekistan kyrgyzstan tajikistan armenia georgia Azerbaijan, Moldova, Romania, Ukraine, and the Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. So if you represent the palliative community from those countries, so I address directly to you, uh, this program is for you. Please write down your questions and ask these questions later. And of course, apply for the grants. We'll be very happy if you do so couple of uh, more words about the evaluation criteria and who will be making the decision. We have three foundational criteria when we evaluate the applications. First, the events alignment with the um, applicant's professional goals. Secondly, we of course overview the applicant's professional potential. This is also quite logical. And thirdly, we also take the look and assess the budget feasibility. The budget should be grounded um, and logical. These are quite standard evaluation criteria in many programs. So it's very important in your application to underline some information that is related to these particular criteria. Please describe everything in connection to this quite clearly because the team of decision makers will overview it in the first place. And now let's talk about who will uh, be the members of the selection committee. Well, we have two representatives of uh, the PACE Foundation. It's me and uh, also Ira Chernozhukova. She is the program head at PACE. And uh, the other member is Dr. Piret Paal. She is a researcher professor uh, at the Paracelsus Medical University in Austria. So this is our selection committee. So I guess uh, I've presented some general questions, but if you will have more specific ones, please uh, let us know. And now I'd like to give the floor back to Xenia. Roman, thank you very much. Now I'll also share the screen of our grant program. So what we'll do now, we'll overview the main questions that you might face in connection to the grant program. And then in the real time mode, we will actually fill in our application as an example. So I'm also monitoring our chat. And if you have any questions during my presentation, please send your questions and I'll be able to answer them probably 
immediately. Now let's talk about the timeline of grant application. As you know, uh, the application process was opened on the 29th of January and it will be closed on the 20th of February. And please um, pay attention to the time. It's uh, in CET uh, time zone. We do understand that you might have some questions while filling in the application. Those questions might be connected to the filling itself or some technical issues, or maybe you can ask some questions about the events that you'd like to participate, whether they are in the framework of the program or not. You can send all these questions to us before you fill in the application. I'd also like to underline that, of course, to avoid any conflict of interest, we will not give any feedback on uh, um, the quality of your cover letter, your budget, explanation and description, etc. This will be assessed by our selection committee later at the selection stage. But everything connected to the technical issues, uh, we stand ready to help you with this uh, in a timely manner. And so the decision uh, on the grants will be uh, published and will be known on the 20th of March. So if somebody gets the grant, of course, these people will be notified about it. And those who uh, don't get the grant, they'll also be notified about it. And we also spread this information in our newsletter and uh, uh, in our professional chat about whether the decision is made or not. And so here you can see some examples of uh, eligible events. This is just to give you an example what can be applicable here. Why did we do this? First, we'd actually like to tell you about some events that you might not know about yet, and we know about them already. And, uh, for example, there are some events in Switzerland, in Barcelona, in Malaga, in Spain. We also included here some site visits. You probably know that palliative care institutions offer some site visits. This is the event within which uh, the professionals from one institute or organization can visit another one and uh, exchange experience and learn from it. So, of course, not only those two institutions organize site visits, there are many more. And if you would like to visit some other institution in a neighboring country or somewhere else, then you can also just um, ask for the invitation from that organization or institution and you can attach it to your grant application because you will actually tell to the selection committee that you've already coordinated your visit with the host institution. Here, also on the website, you can see frequently asked questions that might arise. Of course, the first question that is quite logical, uh, what the grant covers. And so I will go back to this question. You should be able to see it now and you'll be able to get back to it later on our website. So the grant covers expenses related to your travel. What does this mean, travel? This could be airline tickets, train tickets, or also some um, local transport. For example, there are some countries uh, between which there are like some private uh, buses, small buses that are uh, going back and forth. And there are also electronic tickets. This is also applicable. Also, the grant covers event registration fees. And of course, uh, you first need to study the event information and see what is the fee, registration fee for this event. Also, the grant covers uh, expenses for accommodation. This could be a hotel. This could also be even an apartment that you can rent through official sources, for example, Airbnb. And it should all be included into the budget that you'll draft. So I will show you an example of such an application, but you can roughly estimate uh, the 
cost of your accommodation and add it to the budget. And you can also attach, for example, a link to the accommodation where you'd like to be placed. The grant also covers the meal expenses. Uh, we mention it here, but uh, it can be not more than 65 pounds per day for the meals. So this I mentioned. Next. To whom you can connect on these issues and how? You can contact us, our team, via our official email. Uh, also, my colleagues will now post in the chat my personal um, paste email. You can also contact me directly. Ksenia, I'd like to add two more important things, even three ones. First, we will now see it in the application. You can fill in the application both in Russian or in English, whatever you prefer. Secondly, the budget, Ksenia will tell about the limit. And third, it's very important that the event that you plan to participate in, it's very important that uh, there is at least 2.5 to 3 months before or between your application and the event that you'd like to participate in, because there could be some visa issues, etc. So our requirement is actually uh, the applications should be submitted no later than 2.5 to 3 months in advance of the expected starting date of the activity. And the limit, the grant and funding limit is £2,000. Let's review an example of, from Barcelona. For example, there is event in May, so it's quite soon. Some participants might need to obtain visas, and we do know that a visa process can be quite a long one. So if you do understand that you'd like to visit an event, a congress in May in Barcelona, then please submit your applications for the grants earlier because we do need to also calculate how much time you will need to uh, apply and obtain the visa now let's uh, see our case and fill in our template application indeed uh, roman is uh, absolutely correct saying that you can fill in your application both in russian and in english you can even combine uh, these languages so the first block of questions uh, it's quite a general one let's just imagine that i am a pr professional from georgia i now live in georgia so uh, let's uh, imagine that i'm from georgia and i'd like to go to visit a hospice in kazakhstan so in a real-time mode i will fill in the application for myself now as a template so here I'm filling in my personal data. We also ask for uh, your mobile number. Why we do need your information in such a detailed manner? It's because if the selection committee needs some additional information from you, for example, some file hasn't uploaded, or it's a technical issue, or if you ha we have any question to you, we'd really like to connect with you as fast as possible. That's why we're asking for both your email and your mobile phone number. Next one, uh, next block is about professional information, where you work, what position you occupy, etc. just to give this portrait of you as a professional. So let's imagine that uh, I am a director of a hospice. So now I'm filling this in Russian, but I can also do this uh, in uh, English. And we also offer the English translation. So here I'm saying uh, now typing that I'm the director of a hospice, uh, uh, which is called, uh, for example, um, Romashka. It's like a flower name in Russian. Uh, and so here I also attach the link to the website of our organization. Ksenia, I would also like to add a couple of words. So uh, we are also open to independent professionals, but uh, we just do understand that usually some professionals represent some organization. But if you are absolutely independent researcher or uh, expert, then please just describe in this field uh, the organization where you come from, just describe that you are an independent 
professional independent researcher or expert so this is an obligatory field to fill in because we do need to just get an understanding what organization you represent or maybe you are absolutely independent but just please describe it next one event information so as i said i'm coming from georgia and i'd like to go to kazakhstan so for example uh, i would like to visit some institution in the field of palliative care and uh, also to make it seem and sound more convincing it's good to attach the link to this institution that you'd like to visit next one event details if we're talking about some conference then you can just uh, include the announcement of this conference and describe why it's important for you to participate in it because for example the conference uh, can take place there at this time this is the program this is the topic that you're interested in etc etc and um, if we'd like uh, to apply for a site visit, then we need to describe that we would like to visit this institution within these dates and we coordinated it with these professionals from this institution or we plan to coordinate it. But of course, we recommend to coordinate your visit before you submit your application. Next one, the uh, event um, dates. We do understand that you can agree, for example, uh, to visit institution at the end of some month. Uh, then just please describe it that we plan the site visit uh, at the end of April and now we are negotiating with our colleagues from this institution. That's okay for us as well. Please just be specific. Then location. Here we say, for example, Almaty, because um, I'm going into Kazakhstan in this particular example. And the next field, significance of the event for your professional development. As you see, all these questions are obligatory because they will help us to understand your applications better. So here you can say something like this. I'll just now imagine some situation. For example, in uh, Georgia, maybe the mobile service in palliative care is not that developed. And I would like to launch it. And I would like to see the experience of Kazakhstan or some other place and then uh, bring it back to Georgia. So, for example, here I'm saying I would like to take a look at the mobile service of course, I won't go into the details now for the sake of time, but we actually ask you to be quite uh, specific and uh, describe it in details. And uh, I would like to add as well that this um, question is one of the criteria of uh, our assessment. And uh, please uh, focus on this. It's quite important not to mention information about you as a professional here, but here we'd really like to understand how the event aligns with your professional experience and goals. We will analyze your CV and your experience separately, but here the significance of the event for your professional development the answer to this question should really be connected to what you can get from this event in the end. Okay, thank you, Roma, indeed. And the next question is about the visa, because we as PACE Foundation, unfortunately, we cannot help you with obtaining your visa. If you do understand that you might need a visa to visit some country, then you should tick yes. But please remember that you will have to apply for the visa yourself separately. Our grant covers the visa fees. So everything that you will have to spend on your visa, this is covered by our grant. But unfortunately, we have no professionals that can help you with obtaining this visa. This is up to you. And the next block of questions is the budget. Here, we do understand that the budget can be different, right? And it can, for example, vary because 
now you are looking at the prices of tickets and accommodation and when you're actually going somewhere then these prices might change we also go on business trips quite a lot and we don't understand that prices can change significantly so here we also ask you to actually file the budget or draft the budget with the prices at the date of your application and here if you fly it it should be the economy class and uh, uh, the logistics should also be quite convenient for example if there are direct flights and uh, they are within the total budget it's fine uh, if you like to save somewhere maybe and go with connection fly with the connection it's uh, also fine So, actually, before filing this information, I would recommend you to have a, a table, to draft a table with a budget breakdown before you actually submit your application. For example, uh, your airline ticket costs uh, 500 pounds. We also ask you to convert the prices in pounds. For example, I live in Georgia. Uh, the currency here is Lari. So, uh, we just use Google and uh, we see, for example, our airline ticket costs 200 lari and uh, it will be about 58 pounds. We can also round this figure a little bit and uh, mention here 60 pounds or 120 pounds because we also need to calculate the return ticket. So next one, event registration fees. This is not an obligatory question but please add them if you already know about it maybe it can happen that you don't know anything about the registration fees you can say that uh, well we need to specify this information this can happen but still uh, it would be really nice if you could get these details before you submit your application next one accommodation costs for example you'll stay in barcelona for four nights and here you can already mention this in details four nights in barcelona each of them costs uh, 80 pounds colleagues actually it would be quite nice uh, if you could be very specific here because this will help us to assess your budget feasibility if you are going into the details uh, this will help us a lot because this will actually visualize the feasibility of your budget for the selection committee Yes, Roma, thank you. So, for example, in the cost of transport in both directions, uh, I'm saying 120 Tbilisi to Almaty flight. And then I also mentioned the airline that I'd like to use the services of. So, our application should be as transparent as possible. You can also add the link to booking page of the accommodation or Airbnb page of the accommodation that you've chosen or any other options. For example, you can also write here not needed. Accommodation is not needed, but then you also need to explain. For example, I've found where I could stay in that location for free. Then food costs. You should just say, I'm going there like for four nights and uh, every every day and night will cost this amount of money for food costs. You can also mention any other relevant expenses. This could be a visa fee. That's what I'm writing now. What other expenses can we face? Taxi to some particular location. You do understand that you have this in your budget and this will be your expense. For example, I live in Georgia and uh, 
The international airport is not in Tbilisi, where I live, but it's in Kutaisi, it's another city. And I see, for example, that uh, it will be easier for me to fly to Barcelona directly, not from Tbilisi, but from Kutaisi. And then I'll need to take a train from Tbilisi to Kutaisi, from one city in Georgia to another one. You can add it to the transportation costs, or you can also add it here in any other relevant costs and expenses. Here I'm mentioning that I'll take a train from Tbilisi to Kutaisi because the Wizz Air airline flies only from Kutaisi. So here I also mention that I will use the services of low Coster. It's a less expensive company. Uh, they save on different services such as your luggage, food on board, etc. So I mention all this and the selection committee will already understand it. And then the last point here is total budget and you should indicate it in pounds, total budget. In my case, for example, this will be about 1800 pounds. I would like to mention one thing about taxi. Taxi is an option, but if there is no other means of transportation, for example, if you can take a train somewhere or bus somewhere, you'd better use this. But if there is no option for public transport, you can use taxi, but still within some uh, reasonable uh, framework. Right. Uh, okay. Because I actually... Uh, visited one of the countries of our presence uh, last uh, month and I could only get to one of the hospices by taxi. Unfortunately, there were no other options uh, to get there. Next. Motivation. Here you need to mention briefly why you're applying for the grant and how this aligns with your professional goals. So here you don't upload any file, but you just write the information. And here we also ask you to mention how your business trip will influence your professional activities. For example, let's go to my case in Georgia. I'd like to launch a mobile service uh, in Georgia and I'd like to ask my colleagues from different countries or this country where I'm, I'm going to say uh, what are the costs, what are the means of communication between the professionals, what are some other aspects, uh, because it will help me to avoid a large number of mistakes when I'll be launching our mobile service. Here we ask you to attach your CV, your bio, this could be in English or in Russian. If you do understand that you'd like to add something else, attach something else. For example, um, I've already visited some events and that's how they influenced my professional development. Or maybe you'd like to attach some professional certificate. You can also do this. And uh, if you plan to have a site visit to some host organization, we'd like to ask you to attach a document confirming your preliminary agreement. This could be the printout of an email or some invitation from that host organization that is ready to host you. You should upload it here. And if you represent an organization, please attach an official letter from your employer. Uh, this should confirm the relevance of the event for you and for the organization. In general, the more information you give, the more specific and relevant information you give. It's not about only the uh, quantity, it's more about the quality. Uh, the easier it will be for our selection committee to understand your application and make the decision. 
Okay, I'd also like to add a couple of comments. Why do we need these letters? For example, a letter from your organization. We need to also make sure that you've coordinated it with your organization and maybe with your boss. And we need to make sure that uh, uh, you'll be able to leave your workplace for this amount of days and go somewhere to participate in the event in some other place. So this letter will understand help us to understand that uh, indeed you coordinated it with all the interested parties. And uh, in the question where you mentioned your professional goals, your CV, and in the whole application in general, we would really like to ask you to put yourself on the place of experts who will be making the decisions. Uh, I'm sure that you've already been making some decisions uh, in some other situations. Please just imagine yourself as an expert and uh, try to understand what will be relevant for the experts. So we already mentioned the criteria, right? But maybe it will also be helpful to show your application to some of your colleagues. They could also give you some feedback on what's good in your application and what's not very relevant or what's too much. So we'd just like to ask you to filter your application through the lens of a selection committee expert. I'm sure this will help a lot. Yes, Roma, thank you very much. So. Uh, we actually have a drive uploader and uh, you need to upload your file over there. So here you need to mention your name again and your email. And then your file will be uploaded. So it's now being uploaded. And uh, well, uh, now we see the confirmation screen that uh, everything is uploaded successfully. Another thing, in our block of questions and uh, answers, we have a question. We got it. Thank you very much. So we'll answer the question uh, in Q&A after we finish our application. Okay, so We've already uploaded our CV. So here we can see quite a standard um, item agreement with the grant rules and privacy policy. We need to confirm that we agree with this. So the grant program and the newsletters, every piece of data that we get, we store it inside our organization and we don't transfer any information to third parties. An exception is only the uh, service that we use for newsletters. We use an external service for that. So you can actually I've already got a question in our chat. Is there any limit on the size of attachments? No, there is no limit on that. So I can attach multiple files to each of the questions that you can see now. If you face any technical difficulties at any of the stage of application filling in, uh, please contact us because we do understand that there might be some technical issues and you will always be able to actually attach your files just in the email and send the email to us and then we'll be able to attach it properly in our system. Uh, a couple of more questions. It's about our newsletter and also about our specialist chat on Telegram. We already mentioned it in the beginning. So we have a Telegram channel where you can exchange information, ask some questions, also invite colleagues to your events. The information not only about paced events, but some other events as well can be placed there. If you'd like to join the chat, please say yes, and then our uh, team will connect with you. And so here uh, we agree with the processing of personal data and that's it. Our application is submitted and we'll definitely see your application and we'll process it within the timeline that we indicated a bit earlier. So now we've um, already filled in our template application. Roma, maybe you'd like to add something or 
we could just proceed to Q&A and see what questions we got. Roma, would you like to add anything? Well, I think we can actually go directly to Q&A section. So I read the question uh, from Sinja Berge. Well, the list of countries uh, where you could go, this is unlimited list. So this could be any countries, basically. But uh, the list of countries that you can represent for the grant, from which countries you should be coming, I mentioned it before, but I'll mention it uh, once again. So you should represent one of uh, the following countries. Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Moldova, Romania, Ukraine, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. So these are the regions of based presence, but your visit can be to some other country, not necessarily to these countries. Well, actually, what can happen is that uh, you'd like to probably apply for the event that takes place in your country. For example, you can say, I'm a professional from Kazakhstan and I'd like to go to Almaty or somewhere else. This is also fine. This is also an opportunity. Okay, we already got some more questions in the chat. And uh, I also got a couple of my own questions that um, I thought might be relevant. So I'll get back to them later. Do you need to be the citizen of the country that you represent? Roma, uh, probably you can answer this. As far as I understood Varvara, for example, if you are going and representing Georgia from an institution based in Georgia, do you need to be uh, a Georgian citizen for this? Well, colleagues, it's not necessary to have the citizenship of this country, but you should be actually working in the country uh, which you represent. For example, if you work in Moldova, then you should be uh, able to work legally in Moldova. If you're working there legally, if you have work visa, work permit, or maybe uh, there is some other situation or, for example, you, if you have the bank account, some financial tools, then um, we focus on your factual residence rather than your citizenship is like this. Okay, uh, Roma, thank you very much. Now let's also answer some other questions. What is the reporting on the grant? What are the documents that are needed after the training conference or some event is finished and completed? Yes, thank you. So the reporting is quite a basic one. So, of course, uh, we just need to see the content report from you. Uh, you don't have to do anything else, but in that report, we need to see what you've done, how it helped you, what ideas and thoughts you got after this. So, this is quite a, a standard, just a content reporting that is a part of a, uh, every and a grant and also will need some primary accounting documents uh, like the receipts the bills uh, etc uh, i think you've already if you've already got some grants uh, then the procedure will be quite clear to you so our grant is not very different from those ones uh, we need this reporting just to understand and see that you've done what you planned to do uh, all the receipts are there and also uh, that you've achieve the goals uh, that uh, you plan to achieve. So an another question about the currency uh, in which we transfer the grant. So we transfer the payment from the UK in pounds. And if you have uh, um, an exchange uh, for an exchange account, then uh, probably pounds will be converted into uh, your currency. But if you just uh, don't have uh, any foreign currency account, for example, you have an account in Lari only, uh, then, well, 
you should be able to get it in the local currency or if you have for example um, an account in pounds or euro account or dollar account then you'll probably receive the payment in this currency okay thank you roma let's uh, overview the next one does the grant cover only traveling somewhere or i can also organize some events in the country where i live and work for example i live in georgia can i organize an event in georgia and use the grant for this colleagues thank you very much it's a very important and interesting question we haven't specified it yet so let's do this what's important for us here is professional mobility it can be expressed in different formats so this is not only about your professional mobility, but it's even mostly about your professional development. So you can invite professionals to come to you. You can organize it locally if it's about professional development. So it's kind of reverse mobility, right? It's not you who will be going somewhere, but it's some other people that will be coming to you. Sometimes it can be even more. So these applications um, are also relevant and um, eligible and uh, you can apply like this because it's also connected to your professional development we also have a question from tatiana in the chat uh, which is about whether you can invite a professional from abroad to come to you and use the grant for this but i think you've already answered this question yes mm -hmm. We have another question uh, in English. So, is there a limitation on how many applications from one company can apply for this grant? Just repeated uh, the question in English again. So, how many applications can be submitted from one company? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for the question. It's a very good one. Well, if you apply as a, just an um, individual professional, independent professional, then you can only apply once in this grant cycle. But, of course, there can be a situation when you would like to go to some event with a, your colleague, like, uh, for example, a nurse and a doctor, right? Then you can apply, if it's within the budget, you can submit uh, one application and uh, add two people. If we have uh, two people from one organization, for example, Hospice uh, X submits an application from on its behalf. Uh, it's also fine, right? So what's most important is that one person submits one application. One organization submits one application for one event because we'd like to avoid the situation when uh, we have multiple people applying for multiple and different events okay uh, very nice thank you very much and uh, we have another question from aida what events um, are covered within this grant right colleagues so here you can see some examples of course there are not this is not an exhaustive list let's just mention some general rules events can be anything connected to your professional development visit to a conference seminar workshop site visit invitation of professionals to visit you to arrange some seminar or training workshop so it's everything that is connected to you gaining new knowledge and expertise I would also like to specify here that we are talking about the events that will take place in 2024 this year. We should remember that uh, you should submit the application at least 2.5 to 3 months before the application and the event should happen in 2024. We do hope that our grant program will go well and uh, 
if we get this opportunity, then we'll probably or maybe we'll roll out another program for 2025. Uh, we have another question from Varvara. So does the applicant establish himself or herself the timeline of the grant expenses or this should be some budget for a month for example well you manage your timelines yourself uh, what's important is the time before the application this is mostly because of the visa issues and what's important for us uh, from the accounting point of view uh, everything that you apply for within the grant should happen in 2024 everything just should be logical transparent and feasible uh, and uh, well demonstrated to the selection committee so another question from aida about the possibility of studying in your own country. Yes, it's uh, it's available, it's uh, possible for you. So, and next question from Aida is about the total amount of the grant. So Aida joined a bit later, that's why um, she hasn't heard about it. So the total amount of grant, the maximum is 2000 pounds. So, Aida, uh, if you'll be calculating in uh, the local currency, such as Lari, Drum, or anything, you can just use the Google tool for this. So, for example, here I use the example of Georgian Lari. For example, your airline ticket costs about 200 Georgian Lari, and uh, the Google will convert it to pounds. I'd like to repeat once again that we do understand that while you'll be drafting your budget, the airline tickets can cost one amount. And uh, after you receive the grant or the positive decision on the grant, the tickets might change, prices might change. We don't understand it. Please just indicate the prices uh, at the date of the application. Yes, I'd like to repeat here as well that uh, there is no such a task as to using the whole grant amount for example if you can't spend everything equal to two thousand pounds then just don't do this because you'll have to report in each and every cost and expense after this okay thank you roman we have another question if there is such a situation that something changes and the event or conference visit or site visit will not happen, uh, how will that be arranged? Will we have to return the money uh, for the grant or we can also change it to another event, to another project? Colleagues, uh, very good question. I think it's a, an individual one. Uh, of course, these things can happen sometimes. And we don't have any specific answer now because it's also the first experience for us and we'll think about it. We'll also think about the travel insurance uh, against cancellation, insurance against cancellation. Maybe we can also add it to the costs that can be covered with a grant. So, for example, you can uh, either get refundable tickets and refundable accommodation, or you can also just uh, buy insurance against cancellation. Uh, so could you please also write your email address? I mean, the author of the last question, maybe we'll also just add such an insurance to the costs that can be covered by our grant. And if uh, um, an event uh, traveling is canceled, then we'll be able to uh, return. Right, uh, I would also like to recommend to add the insurance to your expenses. We have such a field that says other possible expenses. Uh, you can add insurance over there. Usually it's um, not very expensive one, but of course, when you go on business trips or somewhere else, the situations can be quite different. You'll be in another country. And so we also recommend to add it to the budget in the field which says other expenses. So and you can also check the cost of the medical insurance and insurance in general. And it's important uh, that it covers all the days. 
and also of course the insurance can be and should be purchased before for example if something happens in another country during your visit then you won't be able to just buy an insurance so insurance should be purchased before we have some more questions the requirements towards the documents uh, where can we find it yes uh, we have a website uh, on this grant program so on that website you can see all the necessary information in our chat my colleagues will once again insert our uh, emails our general email and my personal paste email so you can also just uh, contact us directly we have another question from Varvara can I be the receiving party uh, when I'll be using the grant uh, no uh, the answer is no because the owner of the grant and the applicant of the grant should be actually the colleague who will be coming, right? So we do understand that if you'd apply, uh, it would also be quite useful, but it's important for us to get the applications from those who would like to develop and train. It's kind of confirmation that it's needed uh, and it's not just for the host party. So if you'd like to host somebody, then probably the colleagues who'd like to visit you could also apply on their own behalf. Thank you, Roman. We'll wait for some more questions, if there are any. If you'd like to ask a question in voice, please uh, raise your hand in zoom we have such a feature in zoom here and uh, we'll be happy to hear your voice so we're waiting for some more questions and while we are waiting i will share once again the website of our grant program so if you have any question please go to this website uh, and if you don't see the answer to your question please write to us directly to info at paste.org.uk uh, it's once again posted in our chat so you can write either in russian or in english and we'll answer you fast please do not wait until the very last moment we do know that it's a human nature but still please don't do it in this case we are quite strict about the timeline here if we get your application two minutes uh, past the deadline we won't process it because we'd really like to create the maximum fair conditions for the participants of the countries that we mentioned i'd also like to add that you can have some we can have some questions for example some file hasn't uploaded properly or we have some other questions we can also just get back to you and ask to fill in the technical application and so i'd like to add that to actually fill in the google form you don't have to have your email address on gmail you can have uh, your email address on yahoo whatever basically you don't have to have uh, the uh, gmail address okay thank you very much now we've actually switched on your mics and uh, if you have any questions you could ask your question you can also switch on your cameras uh, because uh, we'd be very happy to see you so uh, if i'd like to visit two conferences uh, in may is that possible can we use the grant for two conferences can we use the grant for accommodation and traveling 
For example, if I understand the question correctly, uh, we have one place, for example, Malaga, right? Uh, I think we know what we're talking about. So uh, Malaga and Barcelona, right? Uh, and there are two events happening and Roma will answer the question. Right. Uh, this is possible. You can visit two conferences and use the grant for both. And if you just, uh, if we divide our costs between paste and uh, you, and if all the applications are submitted correctly, then of course you can use this opportunity. And uh, if uh, this is about the events that we have in mind, then yeah, I think uh, it should be possible. I'm not sure that one grant will cover two events, but uh, if you're also ready to bear some costs, then we actually welcome this because this allows to achieve more with joint efforts. And also please mention it in your application. Just please mention that uh, we've reached the total amount of the grant and we are ready to also bear some costs ourselves, for example, accommodation. And uh, we ask you to uh, help and cover the airline tickets. So the more specific you are about your financing, the better it will be for us to review your application and to make the decision. And also I'd like to mention here, colleagues, I'd like to repeat it once again. So this is our first grant program and uh, we try to be as flexible as possible. As you see, even today, we don't have a lot of restrictions and limitations. Yes, we do have some formal criteria, but our goal here is to make this grant useful for you to promote your professional development, to promote palliative care development in your organization and in your country. And so all the combinations that we discussed today and that we answered about, they are available. And if you get any other options or combinations, how you could use this grant, these are kind of individual cases, this is something that you can write to us about. So we won't give any feedback on your application as it is, on your motivation, budget, professional goals. But if there are some specific cases, we will be happy to answer. Uh, we'll be happy to be of help. And uh, the question in the chat about our winners, how many winners uh, do we have? Uh, is there any limit? Uh, we don't have any restrictions here. We can have one winner, uh, five winners, two, doesn't matter. So this is the decision of the selection committee. We won't be proceeding from the fact that we need to have this amount of applications uh, confirmed. No. So if we receive multiple applications and one of them stands out a lot significantly, then there might be one winner. Uh, so our main goal here is the quality, not quantity. I hope I answered the question. Okay, so we'll wait for some more questions. I'd also like to remind you that you can uh, switch on your mic and uh, voice your question. Can I apply for a virtual webinar? Colleagues, thank you very much for this uh, question. I think that, uh, uh, well, then it's a paid uh, webinar. Uh, yes, we see the answer in the chat. It's a very, very paid, means very expensive. Yes, of course, you can apply. Uh, you can apply for digital uh, workshops. I have a question. Yes, Aida, hello. So I represent the Kazakhstan Association of Palliative uh, Pediatric Care. So is this only for medical stuff, like nurses, doctors? Can we also, for example, train a psychologist? Because we have children in terminal, at terminal stage, and uh, we also provide them with a psychologist. We have a hospice for these purposes. So we need psychologists for both parents and children. 
and we also have some other professions for example people who support a company children who also accompany death of children so can we train in any program any discipline if it's an employee of a hospice Aida, if uh, your employee will work with palliative care as a major activity, then yes. In the very beginning, we mentioned that our framework is very wide. So doctors, nurses, researchers, managers. So if there is a person who associates themselves with the palliative care, for example, in your case, you'd like to... Uh, train psychologists then of course it's possible and uh, i would once again like to underline about the opportunity to participate in virtual webinars yes of course you can do this virtual webinars are also eligible for the program we have another question uh, can we actually finance professional training professional education with the grant no, if you're talking about continuous development, which are in the system of formal learning, then no, unfortunately. Now we are talking about internships, trainings, webinars, conferences, everything that is not in the system of formal learning. Here we focus, as we mentioned in the beginning, uh, at knowledge exchange, etc. So we'd like to provide people with the opportunity to network and exchange knowledge and experience. So these are the formats that are good for the grant. These are the formats within which people can talk to a large number of professionals. For example, if you'd like to obtain a master's degree somewhere, for example, in nurse leadership, then unfortunately, as of now, we don't support these initiatives. Maybe in the future, uh, we could do something about this. Uh, it will be the next logical step in the development of our program. So waiting for some more questions, if there are any. Thank you very much for texting in the chat. It's very nice to read the chat. Colleagues, uh, if there are no other questions, and before giving flow back to Ksenia, I'd like to say from my side, it's okay if you haven't asked something today, or if you get some more questions in the future, please contact us. Okay, so uh, let's answer the last question. So uh, if I am um, self-employed, I am a death doula uh, and I don't represent any organization, um, can I apply for the grant? Yes, you can, Varvara. It's very important in the field organization. It's an obligatory field. It's important to say that you're self-employed and um, it's important to justify your application. So with this, I suggest we stop here. Please write your questions to our email. And we'd like to wish everybody good luck with your applications. Uh, we will try and we will uh, make uh, objective, non-biased decisions. Thank you very much, Ksenia. The floor is yours. Yes, dear colleagues, thank you. It was very interesting to answer your questions today. And uh, as Roma already mentioned, we already understood quite a lot about our grant program. It's very nice and pleasant for us to create programs together with you, with your participation. So here you can see the slide with our contacts. Uh, I'd like to remind you about our newsletters monthly. We also have a closed professional chat on Telegram. My colleagues will once again post the link to our chat. And if you haven't saved some links, then please copy them in or from our chat 
please save all these links not to lose them after we finish our event. Thank you very much. Please save your links, open them in your browser, uh, write to us. Thank you very much for your participation and uh, have a wonderful day. Today is Friday and have a great weekend. It was very nice to be with you today. Thank you.